very much. We're off the mark, are we? Off the mark. Off are the we mark, on bro. Wednesday, another hump day. That's it, you know? Wednesday, so, yeah. hump day, my friend. See, yeah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I hope we're well. Good afternoon, good evening, whenever we whenever we might be watching this back. And good morning, Daniel. Thanks for jumping on with us this morning, dude. All How good, are man. things over at Savvy Central? How's things? Good, yeah, yeah. pretty pretty good, man. We've uh, obviously still got the builders in, and um, yeah, yeah. So we're just kind of uh, in the middle of like smashing walls down, and then exciting building, things and, to come, and, yeah, yeah, because we own obviously the building next door, so we're just kind of, of course, putting it yeah. all together. And yeah. um yeah, we're working on Diego's as um oh, you know, we mentioned that before, so it's uh, yeah, definitely it should be uh should, should be good. I think that um it's coming along, it's looking different every day, so Yeah, exciting times. I'm not gonna recognise the office by the time I get back through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gonna say I'm gonna be knocking next door. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right, right, guys. Let's get into it then. So we are on week four of our uh, pre-employability and well-being course. Where, of course, we're looking at skills that are going to, of course, gear us up towards potentially getting back out there into the, into the workforce. But even right now, you know, it's 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 sort of geared up towards getting us back out into society. You know, as things are opening up again as well, we're gonna have to um, obviously take responsibility for our own health and fitness. You know, we sort of spoke at length the last couple of weeks. You know, it's totally, totally understandable if circumstances have been in a place where you haven't really been able to make health exercise a priority over the last year. You know, there's been COVID's affected all of us differently. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, like I say, now you might be just thinking to yourself, OK, things are going back to normal. I can't maintain this sort of lifestyle endlessly. Do you know what I mean? Maybe you are mm -hmm. thinking. You know, I'm, I feel like I've put a little bit of weight on. Maybe you've dropped a little bit of muscle, you know, or yeah. maybe you're just thinking to yourself, I need to get moving a little bit more. I've sat and looked at a screen for like a year and a half. Coming up a year and a half, I just need to get moving a little bit more, you know. Of course, yeah. It's one, one thing, so I'm just trying to tread water and get through get through the thick of it and potentially one of the most challenging times any of us are going to have to face, you Through know. That, yeah, um, no, no, not wrong, mate. To say that, you know, there is a little bit of light on the horizon um, and it is a case of, yeah, we're going forward and, how do we make the most of that, you know? Um, how, how, do, how do we sort of get ourselves into a place where we're feeling good day to day, you know, and just sort of, you know, that, that feeling of like waking up and excited to get out of bed, you know what I mean? Make something of your day, go, go and do something, throw yourself at something, go and challenge yourself, that sort of thing, you know? And of course, thinking about just those skills and how they can transfer over to looking after people close to you as well. You know, maybe you're providing for, maybe you're providing for a family as well. You know, maybe you're cooking meals for your kids as well as yourself. You know, of course, you want those to be getting good, nutritious food as well. But of course, it's having the information. You know, you get to the supermarket, you look at the food label, and it's just, it's just a wall of information, isn't it? Sometimes, that, you know, it's like where, where, where do I even start with that? So. Yeah, we've just been looking and sort of muddling through some of these um, some of these different topics. And of course, last week we looked at how the heart works um, to deliver oxygen to all the different muscles in the body. Um, so while we're on the subject, we're just going to look at some of the other muscle that's in the body as well. You know, we've got the heart, it's cardiac muscle. It does, it's got its own job. It's just working to keep obviously the oxygen um, and the blood flowing around your system. And then we've got what we would class as sort of skeletal muscles, you know, muscles that we control voluntarily and move vol voluntarily in order to control how we move you know throughout the day if you if you stand up you know you you've, you've sent signals to your brain and certain muscles to to get you from the seated position to stand it up you know and that is obviously a, a, a voluntary cho a choice as well yeah and of course we, we've talked as well when we looked at the skeleton you know one of its main functions is movement and helping us move um, of course, our joints and the way that we're put together. But if we haven't got muscles, we're not going anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's um, it was something that I said to Hatham yesterday. You know, we're essentially a really, really complex system of like pulley, pulley systems, pulley systems and levers. You know, with um, how the how the muscles help our um, move our bones and essentially move us. You know, it's an so, interesting way of looking at it. Like definitely. Yeah, and I was I was thinking about of course this idea of if we can picture where muscles are mm -hmm. and how and how they move. We can we can be a lot more um, confident in the way that we're training and in the movements that we're that, that we're putting in our, into our training. Yeah. You know, you can get an idea of um, if you can get a look at where a muscle sits. Like the one I like to use for example is is the chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if if you've got your chest, you can even do certain exercises. If you didn't have a top on, you could see the muscle fibers sort of running across ways on your chest. So you can get an idea of okay to work that muscle. I need to stretch it this way, 
Yeah, which yeah. is where a chest, which is where something like a chest press or a press up comes in, you know. And if you're in a position where you go to the gym or you're trying to train at home and you think I want to work with muscle, but you don't really have an idea of how it moves, how can you decide what exercises you're going to go and do for it? Really, you know. Um, especially if you go to the gym, you know that right. For my chest, I do bench press. And you make you make the cardinal sin of going to the gym on a Monday and thinking you're going to get the bench to do a chest press, international chest day. That's you it. Know? Yeah. Uh, and then Impossible. you get the and you're thinking to yourself, right, what else do I do? What are the exercises can I do to stimulate this muscle? Um, and then, of course, like I say, having an idea how that muscle actually moves, you can um, be, be just a little bit more com- uh, confident in what you are doing and making sure that you're going to train safe and ultimately avoiding injuries and stuff like that yeah. as well, you know? Um, and, 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 of course, like we sort of said before, um, the, stronger a muscular, or the stronger your muscular system is, the more strain it sort of takes from your skeleton, mm-hmm. you know? protecting your joints and specifically through certain ranges and stuff like that you know so getting a good idea of the muscles where they are especially the main major muscles um we can have a like I say get a bit of an idea of where they are how they work how they move and then when you go into the gym maybe as you go to one of the resistance machines and it might be the shoulder press and there might be a little picture of a guy on there with his shoulders like highlighted in red and you know oh okay that's my delts that i'm going to be working now mm-hmm. and then you can actually start to put together some focused training you know, like, I'll be the first one to hold my hands up and say, when I started at the gym, I would literally turn up and I'd start at machine one and I'd do a set on there and I'd go to machine two and do a set on there and I'd just work my way around and I'd do a little bit of everything because uh, yeah. I was 15, 16, you're not going to clue what you're doing. Of course, man. Like, right, I'm at the gym, I'm doing something that's better than nothing, you know, which which is, of course, is, is true. You know, I would much rather see somebody go in the gym and do a set on every machine and then go home than just stay at home and sit on the couch. You know, you're going, to, you're going to get a lot more out of it, you know. Um, so what they say, it doesn't matter how fast you go and you're lapping everybody that's sat on the couch, but you're going to get a lot more out of your training and move towards your goals, I'd say, a lot a lot quicker and, and in a lot more sort of concentrated way if you can start to target your training a little bit more, you know. And that's course, not yeah. to say you need to do shoulders on a Monday, chest on a Tuesday, back on a Wednesday or whatever it is, but you could decide to yourself, right? Okay. My legs are feeling pretty fresh today. I'm going to go in and do my legs. I've got an idea of what muscles are in my legs. I know how they move. I can go and I can just pick four or five different exercises and I can work my way through, you know? And um, like I say, just making sure that you're doing everything safely and just knowing what exercises that you're doing and what muscles that you're working, yeah. you know? So then you can come in the next day and you can say, okay, yesterday I worked these muscles. So today I'm going to work these instead of the other ones get a little bit of a rest you know whereas you might join a gym for the first time and you hear all this talk of glutes quads ham, ha- hamstrings delts and you might literally be like what do any of these words mean do you know what i mean because if, exactly, you, if, yeah. you've, if you've never been around them why would you know what they mean true you know um it's going to be a lot of a, a lot of new terminology for a lot of people especially coming out of lockdown you know and and, and again this isn't to say everybody's going to sign up to the gym and go back you know because there will be, be some people that don't feel necessarily comfortable doing that straight away there might be some people that want to wait till they've had the second vaccine before they go back to a gym and of course buddy we've mentioned over and over again the gym isn't for everybody so what other forms of exercise and activities are out there but still having an understanding of how your body moves and why it moves in a certain way where those muscles are again it can just keep you safe and just get a good idea of what it is that you're actually working and maybe actually highlight some sort of blank spots in your training you know if you're doing a lot of football for example you know i've, I've spoke to Hatham. Hatham plays a lot of football of course he's doing a lot of work with his with his thighs he's mm-hmm. doing a lot of work with his glutes his bum muscles you know and he, he he acknowledges that if he's training like that three four times a week he needs to be addressing the other muscles in the body, you know, mm-hmm. to keep everything in balance. If he's not doing any strength and conditioning or any sort of training on his hamstrings, sooner or later he'll probably end up with knee problems because his thighs will be really developed, but the back of his legs not so much. And that that internal tension is going to, um, of course, create 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 more tension and, and lead to pain eventually, you know, potentially um, injury. So getting an idea of what it is that you are working Again, can help you just fill in the blanks with the rest of your exercise as well, just to make sure you're getting that Course, yeah. holistic, full body sort of training, you know. Um, right, buddy. So if you don't mind, mate, we'll just roll onto the next screen then, and we've yeah, actually course, got uh, we've got uh, we've got a word search to do. So so in there is um, it's um, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I believe there's eleven words in there. And they are all major muscles in the body. Yeah, so just take a few minutes, 
have a scan through, pick out any words that you can, that, that you think might sort of stick out here, that you think you maybe have heard before, that are to do with muscles. Um, of course, some of them are a little bit more more common that you might have, might have come across than, than others as well. But yeah, just pick, pick out what you can. Um, pick, pick out anything that you can. And like I say, make a note of them if you want. And then, of course, as we're working through, you can even make add to those notes, you know, and sort of add where they are in the body and that sort of thing as well. But yeah, we'll just spend five minutes or so on this uh, and then we've got an answer slide and we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump forward and we'll have a little look and um, see what we have got to do next. Um, so just while the guys are spending five minutes or so on that, um, of course, buddy, do you have a favourite um, muscle group to train? Do you have a favourite um, a favourite exercise even? Um, I would say favourite muscle group to train is probably back, right? Because I think that mm -hmm. back is probably the, it's like, um, cause if you, if you're training like the front side of your body, you've got like your chest, you've got your kind of, um, obviously shoulders, and then you've got the front side of your arms and stuff like that, mm -hmm. your abs. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different muscle groups there. Whereas your back, I don't, I'm not sure if it's the biggest, but it's definitely like a pretty huge muscle group, right? You've got your lats and it maybe is. like your delts, your traps or whatever, but like just your back in general, takes up such a huge part of your body and i also think if you if you if you're trying to um build muscle i think a lot of people do like chest and bias is obviously the classic but mm -hmm. like your back is actually going to give you a lot of that width because the more you grow your lats it's actually going to give you that v-shape and also it's going to help with your posture a lot which is going to make you stand taller and look bigger as well so i think yeah. uh, back's sometimes overlooked but it's maybe the best you know in, in, in my opinion definitely is buddy that, that, that that's a really good point that mate you know and i, I it's something that I've seen a lot over the years where people who find themselves sort of naturally sort of hunched over a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and that sort of slanted posture, like a lot of us do, especially now after sitting at home for a year, Same, yeah, year a, a year and a half, you know. And and what is tempting is to think to yourself, right, I'll do a load of chest exercises so my pecs get bigger and then that's going to open my chest up, you know. That's, yeah. and, I'm, and, and, and I mean, that's kind of sound log logic really you know you think okay me, me, me chest looks a little bit sort of sunken i'll, I'll build it it'll grow. when really um what we should be doing in that case normally is working on the back muscles so there's more tension there to pull your shoulders back yep. to naturally lift your chest anyway your chest can look bigger just from sorting your posture out and again it's not all to do with muscles and size it could be the way that you carry yourself do you know what I mean? Walking into a room with a little bit of confidence or walking down the street with a little bit of confidence, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. trying try to just, 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 like you say, chin up and, 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 and stand up tall, stand up proud, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, you know? Oh, I just think we've got Gaz in the chat as well. Morning, Gaz. Morning, Hi, Gaz. Gary, Hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, So, so yeah, you know, um, the back, like you say. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. True. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man, yeah. carrying on uh whatever game may be, uh, Overwatch, COD, anything like that, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. A hard carry. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, buddy. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I used to really enjoy doing, training, training me back as well and hitting those, mus uh, hitting those muscles. Like you say, it's, it's a massive muscle group, you know? I would say that you, you probably, um, if you were to class legs as, it's, as a full muscle group, Obviously, there's a lot of muscle there if you're lumping the quads and the hamstrings in together. But if you were to split them like a lot of people would, you know, I've seen people split quads and hamstrings and do them on separate days. Mm -hmm. But of course, a back session, you've got a lot of muscle to hit there. Like you say, you've got lats, traps, rhomboids, and that's before you even think about do I work on those muscles in my lower back as well? Sure. Or do I lump those in with core training? Because that might be more to do with core and, and like you say, sort of posture and sort of stability and stuff like that as well. You know, but it, it is, it can be a really, really big, big session. You know, I've, I've seen people split up um, lats and sort of rhomboids and traps where you were pulling more sort of laterally in front of you. Um, I've seen them split those up as well, you know, do a back session during the week for width and then do a back session during the week for sort of depth and, 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 and strength as well, you know. But yeah. again, it, it, if you lump it all together, it can take a long time to get through in the gym, you know, which is where, of course, when we're talking about circuits, we're talking about um, supersets, drop sets, all of that sort of thing can come in and save you a little bit of time, actually, you know. I used to quite quite like doing sort of like a drop set on like um like what what you'd class as like a T bar row you know where you sort oh, of bend yeah, over yeah. and you pull it you're pulling like a weight up into your chest yeah, sort of thing amazing, you know yeah. yeah yeah really good really good but um yeah yeah um but back back's always a good one to train um I, I never really enjoyed doing chest 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For, for all the um, for all the hype that is around chest and chest day and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it was never it was never my favorite. I know. You know I, I think probably prefer doing legs. Yeah, same. I, I I think dude, just to kind of go off of what you're saying as well. I think that the good thing about training back is if you do on bigger biceps, uh, a lot of back exercises, the secondary muscle group that's being trained is usually your biceps. So if you think about Absolutely, like, yeah. if you think about like seated rows, that's going to train your biceps or even uh, chin ups. Obviously, yeah. depending on your grip, it's going to focus on your biceps more. Um, but yeah. yeah, so it's often the uh, secondary muscle group exercise in a lot of in a lot of back. Um, it is, it is, you know, you know just like you know. a tricep is worked a lot through a pushing movement when you're yeah, doing yeah. chest or shoulders and stuff like that. And it's, Absolutely. it's one of them where like, I haven't for a long time done arm isolation exercises. I let my triceps and biceps get worked through the pulling and pushing that you're doing of course, yeah. as well, you know, um, I'm not training for any aesthetic shows or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, I'm more about sort of function and being able to push, being able to pull. Um, and, and then of course you might need to do just like a little bit of, say if you're trying to do, um, a, a push up, for example, if we're thinking about training at home, if you try and do a push up and you feel that you're feeling it in your triceps a lot more than your chest, it might be a technique thing and it might be just the way that you've got everything lined up or it might just be that your pecs are a good bit stronger than your triceps and you might need to do some isolation work to get your triceps to catch up and be strong enough so that, you know, they can cope and and your your chest can actually um, get involved as as, as well a little bit, you know, rather than like your triceps burn out and you can't do anything and and your pecs are still feeling pretty fresh. You know, which can be quite frustrating if you are trying to do chest and get a good sort of feeling like you like you're stretching your chest muscles and stuff like that. Yeah, I, t- I, t- I totally agree. I always feel like um, <clears throat> for some reason it always felt quite hard to isolate your chest because, of, but even though like you know you do like whatever white like wide grip bench or, or 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 flies or whatever like to try and target your chest, but it always felt like it's I don't know why it feels like a more difficult grip to isolate, but. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, that, that that you're talking, um, moving into stuff like flies and stuff like that. There, you know, and but even even then, you if you come too far, you'll feel your shoulder take over. Yeah, you know, you'll you'll feel them delt kick in, and and that is that is where again having an idea of how these muscles move and how far they're willing to go and should go, tell can can help with the range that you're training through them as well. It's like. If you jump on a bench and you're, in, of course, you, you, you're new to all of this, like all of us are at, at, at some point, you think to yourself, so all I've got to do is bring the bar down, just say, for example, from overhead, I've got to bring it down to there and then I've got to push it back up. You're like, okay, I can do that. But are you thinking about where the tension is? You know, what muscle is actually engaged? Like if you come down too far, the muscle actually drops off your shoulder mm-hmm. and tra- transfers to a different muscle. So if you're trying to develop your shoulder, it's pointless coming any lower because yeah. that tension is elsewhere. It's not the muscle that you're trying to work through that exercise. So really you're giving yourself more work to do and increasing the risk of injury because you're trying to work a muscle through a range that it's not designed to work through pretty much, you know? So again, get an idea of how the body works. You can, you can even start to feel, okay, if I come down to there, you can put your finger on the muscle and you can feel it engage. And you think when I get to there, you feel the tension sort of drop off, especially if you're trying to push something a little bit heavier, you know? So again, just an idea of how all of this can sort of play in and um, help us train well and help us keep fit and help us stay safe. Um, okay, buddy. So let's have a, let's have a quick little blast through some of these, uh, through some of these answers. Um, so we've actually got an answer slide to I'm go next. Go buddy. Someone's at a door, I'm just going to go like that. Yeah, no, no worries, mate. Cool. I've been, I've been summoned. Um, okay, guys, cool. So um, I'm just waiting to see if the chat caught up, see if he skipped onto the answer slide or not. So um, let's see what we can pick out of here. Yeah, so um, of course we've got, first one that I can see across the top is uh, is the gluteus maximus. Yeah, so again, if you've got an idea, um, maybe it's as I'm reading them out, if you've got an idea where they are in the body or, or maybe it's another name for the muscle that, you know, can give us an idea where they are in the body, then by all means do, you know, um, even if it just sort of generalizes things a little bit more. So, of course, um, if I was to start from the top line, reading across um, from that G in the very top left hand corner, of course, we've got the um, we've got the gluteus maximus, which is essentially your bum muscle. It's 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 the majority of your of your of your bum muscle, pretty much. There's a couple of little smaller ones in there, um, but the gluteus maximus is is the majority of your of of of, of your of your bum muscle, and. Um, is that cat sneaking in? Yeah, that was cat sneaking in there. Yeah, give him a good morning from me. 
Rob says morning, good morning. Hey, good morning. I uh, hope you're well, buddy. Hope you're well. Um, we were just um on about the uh, the gluteus maximus muscle there, buddy. And yes. the fact that it is interesting. In fact, I'm not sure whether you knew it. Actually, it is. It's the biggest single muscle in the body. The gluteus yes, maximus. Yes, I remember. I yeah. did hear about that. Actually, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um. Which, which, which again, you know, if you start to think about like when you're doing exercises like lunges, mm -hmm. squats, and stuff like that, you think that big muscle uses so much oxygen. Of course, your heart rate comes up. Yeah, you know, like you can do a lot of glute exercises and lower body exercises that stimulate a lot of muscle. Like you do ten squats, and your heart rate's going to come up a lot more than if you do ten bicep curls where you're just working one little muscle here. You know, because your body doesn't need to get as much oxygen around there. Dude, yeah, know? and uh, I feel like whenever you do heavy squats, I feel it in your like central nervous system more than any of them. Exercise yeah. like yeah. it really shakes you to your core sometimes if you do heavy yeah. squats. And if you think about it, really, when you're getting up to sort of the maximum or, or, or sort of like pushing it to what would be classed as failure, which no matter how many reps you're doing, you're sort of struggling and, and maybe can't even get that last sort of rep out. You know, if, 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 if you're going to, to failure, yeah, you are going to be burning um, obviously so much, so many more calories. Um, and, and of course, just, just, just wearing that muscle down, you know, and, 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 and like you say, that is where that, that, that extra heart rate comes from. Yeah. And like you say, you'll feel like how important your breathing is as well. Like if you get to the bottom of a squat or if you try and work through a squat range and you are working at sort of going to be hitting on failure, you know, if you're, if you're working on a squat, you're going to feel it in your heart and your lungs as much as anything. You know, it's probably not going to be your legs that stops you getting back up, especially at first, Course, you yeah. know, it, it is going to be, it's going to be your breathing. Like you get down for like in, into the bottom half of a squat and you're about to start pressing back up and you're working at the maximum of your ability, if you don't get your breathing right, you're not getting back up at the end of the day. You know, it's yeah. just not happening. You've got to get the oxygen round into that muscle for it to fire. Um, I was just saying, Wib's getting in as well. Morning, Wib. I uh, hope you're doing well, buddy. Oh, we're, uh, we're all in today. We've even got a, a cameo from Katner in the office. Oh, we're flying, man. We're flying. Um, okay, guys. So, um, yeah, buddy, if you don't mind just flying onto the next slide, we've actually got, um, we've got an answer slide there. Um, and we can start um, picking them out a little bit easier. Sure. Um, so, um, what, do, what else have we got? What else have we got? So, gluteus maximus at the top. I'm going to do all of them that sort of um, run across ways. And then, well, I'll do the ones that sort of run vertically as well. So, if we come to, um, of course, the U in gluteus, come down two rows, we can see the start of the word bicep. Yeah, that's not the um, <laughs> that's not the patron saint of back day, like Saint, saint Bicep, you know, <laughs> with the little ST saint before bicep, it. Yeah, saint Bicep, bit. yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's 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 got a strong following, Saint Bicep, yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah, the bicep, as we were sort of uh, discussing a minute ago, it's um it's essentially the 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 muscle that sits on the inside of your arm that helps um flex the elbow pretty much, you know, and it helps bring uh, the palm in towards the body, towards the head, um and Again, it's it's classed as one muscle, you know, the bicep, but it's got two different heads or two different parts to it, um, which is why it's called the bicep, bi meaning two, of course, bicycle, bipedal, all of that as well. So, so bicycle is exactly, uh, biceps exactly the same. Um, and while we're on triceps, the same as well. Triceps got three heads, biceps got two, which is where we get the tri and the bi from as well, you know, but um, which is which is why, you know, um, we've got to even just training biceps, you hit a couple of different angles. You know, you might have seen people doing sort of standing bicep curls, which mm -hmm. is the more common. You might have seen them doing with the elbows out in front of them and they're doing like a little bit more sort of um, raised up in front of them um, or the old hardcore, just like leaning forward on a bench, one hand, uh, one elbow resting on your knee, you know, like you, uh, proper muscle beach, styly bicep yeah. curls, it's like, you know? Yeah, um, I've seen that, man, where it's like, because uh, it's it's putting pressure on the, the bottom, so it isolates only the bicep, right? Um, mm -hmm. You see those yeah, kind yeah, of racks yeah. in a... Yeah, like the, the body builders yeah. and stuff use those words. Like. Yeah, so 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 a quick quick little fact, um, and I might have mentioned it before, but when a muscle fiber works, it either works a hundred percent or not at all. Yeah. So if you're doing if you're doing extra exercises that are hitting the same muscle fibers, great, those are working really, really hard. They're firing a hundred percent as all muscle fibers do. But the muscle fibers that aren't firing at all are never firing if you don't change up your exercises, which is why we change them up, get a bit of variety in. Do you know what? Even just changing your palms from that to that 
and yeah. doing bicep curls can mean that you're going to hit some different angles, you know, and, 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 and help those biceps and help whatever muscle it is really in theory, help it grow a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, rather than hammering the same muscle fibers over and over again, you know? So yeah, changing up those exercises, it keeps it interesting for yourself as well. I think. Yeah. Of course, man. Um, okay, so on the same on the same line as saying bicep, we've mm-hmm. got um, we've got the the deltoid, which is you know th- probably the first thing that you're going to think of when you think of a deltoid is probably going to be this one on the front of your shoulder, like I was just on about just a second ago. But what we've actually got, we've got the the front deltoid, a side deltoid, which does a lot of lateral movements, and we've got a rear deltoid as well, which helps with shoulder retraction, pulling movements. Um, even the likes of pull up and chin up, chin ups and stuff like that as well, you know. So that is again, we need to make sure that all those muscles are getting hit evenly. Because if you're just doing like the front delts, like if you think if you're hammering chest day and hammering your front delts, because you know those are the muscles that you see in the mirror when 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 you're looking. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. easy to sort of gravitate towards just developing those muscles. So your chest's really tight, and then your front delts are really tight. And then you're wondering why you're hunched over and your posture's not very good, you know? And again, it might be because of the way that you're sitting day to day. It might be the job that you're doing. It might be lifestyle. And it might be unavoidable in, in, in a lot of ways, but it can be um, it can be sort of rectified and, and addressed through your training, um, you know? It might be a case of saying, look, I need to do a little bit less on those muscles that, you know, look, look good on the gram, but I need, to be, I need to be thinking about the muscles that are going to help me postulate you know, and help take the the strain off me bones and off me skeleton. Because, you know, as much as I am, whatever age you are at the time, of course, the longer that goes on, the more chance it is to just sort of build in and escalate and, and sooner or later. So you end up with, of course, stuff like slip discs. You end up with sort of like um, bul- bulging discs even, um, sort of even sort of like um, disintegrating vertebrae, stuff like that, you know, and, 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 and of course, it's, it's, it's no good. We can fix a muscle a lot easier than we can fix a bone, you know, especially when it comes to general wear and tear um, the majority of the time anyway. And as always, prevention better than cure. You know, if you don't need to go under the knife, you don't need to go in for a hip replacement, happy days. Do you know what I mean? Just, exactly. because, we can, just because we can do it um, and science lets us um, doesn't, doesn't mean, of course, like don't look after our own bodies and just sort of like um, just rely on science to sort it out for us, you know, because science has actually given us all the tools to not get to that point in the first place, really, I guess, you know, now, now I think about it. Um, so, so yeah, we want to make sure, again, we are deltoids. We don't just think about this one at the front. We've got the side delts. We've got the rear delts as well. But deltoids will always be um, to do with the shoulder area as well. Um Okay, cool. And we'll get we'll get we'll get a, um, a good proper look at them in a second when we get onto the uh, the next little diagram. Um, so coming two rows underneath deltoid, we've got the hamstring, yeah, um, which is uh, it's the big it's a, a group of muscles that make up sort of the back of your thigh, mm-hmm. yeah. So sort of between your bum and your knee sort of area, um, and again, quite underutilized in a lot of day to day movements. You think stepping, walking, running, jumping going upstairs, any of that sort of thing. Before we get on the sports and exercises, you know, football is, like we say, quad dominant. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, And, of course, football is really, 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 really common um, activity. It's a really common sport in the UK, you know, as, 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 as it should be. You know, but there's a lot of stuff day to day that doesn't hit our hamstrings as much as it needs to, and they either end up tight or weak or a combination of both. You know, like a lot of the back problems I've, I've dealt with over the years has come from either the glutes or the hamstrings, either being tight, tight, tight or weak, you know, um, and not, not being able to um, cope with the tension that's being put by other, on maybe it's on the kneecap um, or the back by other muscles. Um, like I say, like the quads, if, if the front of your thighs are getting a lot of work. And they really develop, but your hamstrings aren't, you know. Um, if you can remember Kieran Dyer, who used to play for Newcastle, um, always out with a hamstring injury because of the way he ran, because of the way that he ran, it was he, it was his um, it was just his gait and the way that his body moved when he ran, and he actually had to retrain himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and the way he moved um, to be able to um, not not injure himself so much. You know, because there was one, a couple of seasons he spent more time on the physio table than on the pitch. You know, but um, it, it it happens. It's 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 one of those sports. Um, but of course, like I say, that's again why we need to be addressing these things. And like I mentioned earlier on, Hatham, for example, knows full well. I play a lot of football. My hamstrings don't get much work. I need to make sure those hamstrings are getting work elsewhere. You know, and and and, and sort of balance that out a little bit. 
you know, and to be able to do the, the hobby or the activity that I love even um, long term, long term, that's for sure. So, so your hamstrings, big collection of group uh, uh, muscles down the back of your leg. Um, normally thought of as one muscle or one muscle group, but it's actually three. It's actually three muscles that are all sort of, um, they, they, they work together. But again, that just sort of comes back to what I was saying a second ago, where if you're doing one exercise all the time, that just hits like one part of that hamstring, the other parts are going to be quite weak as well. So we need to make sure, again, we get a good mix of training, a good variety of ranges, which is why um, it's been a long time since I would just go in the gym and do the same thing week after week after week, you know, or even, even sort of prescribe that to, to a client you know, because most of the time what they're going to get more benefit from is hitting those different angles. That stability that's going to help day to day, you know, getting up the stairs in and out of the car, you know, um, up, up and down step ladders, getting that in and out of the loft and stuff like that. You know, that's the sort of stuff why people are training most of the time, even though we don't think of it specifically for all those things. We, I think a lot of us train. So the rest of our lives is just a little bit easier. You know what I mean? A little bit more manageable. You know, certain things, tiny shoes doesn't hurt. You know, putting socks on in the morning isn't isn't a chore. You know, that sort of thing. It's not all about like, oh, I want this one particular um, muscle to be massive. You know, so that like we we have got to get a good little um, a good little variety of training in there, and like I say, keep it fresh for ourselves as well. Yeah, spot on there, absolutely. Um, okay, guys. So we've got two more to do. We'll crossways, then we'll do vertical. So. Um, Three rows up from the bottom, we've got um, the trapezius or, or the trap. You might have heard them referred to before. So the delt is this one. The traps is the traps are this one here um, that you'll often see. So I like, I was saying I hear from yesterday, especially in the pro wrestlers, you know, people who are on additional supplementation, should we say, always end up with big traps. Yeah, you know? definitely. Um, they have like the overalls like clinging onto the trap like up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it, it's essentially a muscle that um, it, it helps retract the shoulders again, but it also helps bring your shoulders up towards your ears as well, you know, so it, it's moving through a couple of different ranges because obviously the shoulder is, uh, it, it's got so much range to it, you know, it's a ball and socket joint that can move all over the place, whereas your elbow is just a hinge, like if, you, if your elbow moves any way other than that, you know, something's gone wrong somewhere down the line, you know, um, and you're probably off to accident and emergency if your elbow's moving in a different way. Um, but, 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 but yeah, you know, um, like I say, your traps are a big one where we, we carry a lot of tension, actually, you know, day to day, even if it is from, from posture, but some of it emotional stress. Um, maybe you are sort of like carrying yourself with your shoulders sort of hunched up a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. um, like just feeling that tension in your shoulders. Like I've, I've, been for a couple of like proper massages and stuff like that and it's always me traps that gets me like it, it, it always has been um and of course like i say tension in there just from doing day-to-day stuff and not thinking about how we're actually doing it you know um you could do a lot of exercises where if you're picking heavy stuff up and your back isn't flat you know and those lower back muscles are engaged like they would be through a squat or a deadlift and protecting your spine you know a lot of that tension is going to be on your traps and if you've got that rounded, rounded sort of shoulder position, oh, yeah, you totally. know, sort of naturally, your traps are stretched all day long. Mm-hmm. So when mm-hmm. you when you try and give yourself a natural posture and think, right, I'm going to work on my posture because um, I've sat around for a year, you know, um, that can actually feel painful where sitting in the right position feels wrong. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to correct myself. Why is this uncomfortable if this is what my yeah, body wants? Yeah. Or just what your body's not used to, you know, and and you've just got to, it, it comes with a little bit of training, isn't it? You know, I've always said to people, think about it just in little spurts throughout the day, correct it, be mindful. And it's not a case of saying to myself, right, I'm going to hold myself like this all day because it'll be agony. Yeah, of course. Have you, um, you're not used to it. ever pulled your neck before, Rob? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, again, like I've suffered, uh, I had a bad shoulder injury at one point, and this trap has never really been 100% since. Yeah. And it is. It's one of them where, like, you move your head too quick or go the wrong way. Um, it's insane. And I, I think, I think it's, um, it's always been like that. Actually, since I was in a car accident, um, oh, wow. and I, I got, I got like pretty bad whiplash. Yeah. And I mean, like, t- touch wood, everybody else was all right. Um, I was all right, really. At the, at the yeah, end of yeah. the day, could have, could have been, could have been a lot worse. Um, but, but yeah, you know, um, when you when you put your neck out, it's like it's it's I'm I'm written off for a couple of minutes. Yeah, like, like that. Every time you want to do anything, you have to like move your whole body you can't like do it's like yeah oh yeah 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 up. yeah i call her <laughs> alex has done it before and i call her zoolander when she does it because she can only look left <laughs> i call her zoolander 
Um, but, but, but yeah, it's um, it's 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 a nasty one. Um, and 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 like you say, once once it once it goes, it's like you, you really are you really are kind of knackered, mm-hmm. you know. And that is where sort of like a little bit of self massage can come in. Like I'll often find myself just sitting and sort of self massage on my shoulders, getting like the tennis ball that I've mentioned before, get it against the wall and get it pushed into there. And it, it it's all from the traps, you know. It's all from 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 those those muscles that we're talking about, and um, that sort of come from the base of your skull out to your shoulders, and then they sort of come back in in like that almost diamond sort of shape and connect halfway down your spine again. So it's a big, big muscle, you know, coming back to what Daniel mentioned earlier on when you're training your back. Like I used to put traps at the end of shoulders because it's just such a, such a big muscle. Um, and it was eaten into back there too much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like your lats and your rhomboids and your rear delts and your, your rotator cuffs and stuff like that. Um, it was easy to do shoulders and traps. Like I say, lower back went in with core training um, so I had a lot more time to focus on lats and rhomboids and all of those pulling movements as well, you know. But um, yeah, it's 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 definitely when when you when when you throw your neck out, um, it's one of them. I've had it when I've been mid bench press, you know. Where oh, if you have you ever had it where you're halfway through a rep, where you're halfway through a rep or something, I used to get it um, again before I was sort of qualified, before I knew what I was doing really. Um, I used to get a lot of pain up on overhead press, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and I would get that pain running up there and I'd be like, almost like you can feel the contract and it'd be like sort of pulling your neck over to one side. Um, and I, I've, I've had to stop sets, yeah. you know, and that was, again, that was a case of, okay, then if I can't do the sets that I'm trying to do because of injury and pain, I need to address this. I need to sort this out, you know, and I need to get yeah. that, I need to get that sorted. And that, that could even be like little things like sleeping with the same arm under the pillow, every night sleeping on the same shoulder every night you know where it's maybe rounded forward a little bit more and the other side isn't things things like that add up over time you know if you think it's like ideally we're getting eight eight hours sleep a night Mm -hmm. you know and we're potentially in the same position for eight hours and we're not really we can't control it you know Um, I, i try and pay a little bit more mind to the way that i do fall asleep and if i wake up in the middle of the night i'll try and recorrect myself a little bit but at the end of the day eight hours if you're flat out like I'm sure a lot of us are at the end of the day. Hopefully, um, it's it's hard to really know what's going on. So so yeah, you might just start to get little signals like that. Like there's a little bit of tightness. You know, you might go to do another one to give you an idea about shoulders and, and your traps in particular. If you go to do an overhead press and you've got like one arm right back there and you can push, and this one's like still out in front of you and you can't get the same sort of range on both sides. Again, that gives you an idea. Like try and get them equal first. Do you know what I mean? There's no way your shoulders are going to develop equally if you're not training them through the same range, I, you know? Yeah, I had um, a PT, like, look at me years ago, and, like, one of my friends as well, and he said, like, put your shoulders back, stand straight, and, like, look up. And he could see just from, like, looking at us, like, if we had, like, a shoulder injury before, just because yeah. of the, like, our, like, posture was slightly tilted, like, very slightly tilted. Um, <laughs> or the fact that if our shoulders were hunched a little bit forward, and that, that's a sign of, like, overdevelopment of, like, your chest or whatever, and not as much on your back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then you could say, like, well, because you're slightly tilting that shoulder, I can see that you've had an injury there, and I thought that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it, it, it's amazing how these things leave clues almost you know what i mean if you know if you know what you're looking for yeah and you can get you can get to the point where you look at someone and just be able to see the way that they move and get a sort of like a rough idea what's 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 going on you know um it really really is interesting um and and of course it just, just comes with experience and a little bit of time you know from being familiar with these muscles and and what it what normally what it looks like when when there's an injury or like a little bit of a impingement or something like that you know it is it's it's absolutely fascinating mm-hmm. um Okay, guys, so uh, the last one running across ways we've got a, is the quadricep, which I mentioned earlier on, the big one, big group of muscles down the front of your thigh. Um, again, you'll see it classed as the quads or the quadriceps. Um, it's actually four different muscles, which is where that quad actually comes from. You know, if you think, obviously, a quad bike's got four wheels. The quadricep works exactly the same. It's got four um, four parts to it, four heads. Um, and again, it is the biggest muscle group in the body. Yeah, um, if you are thinking about just sort of exercises that are going to isolate just those muscles, you know, um, it, it, it's going to be a lot of work giving your quads a good workout, you know, which is why a lot of people shy away from legs day, you know, a lot of people, um, let's be honest, like, it, legs day can be emotional, like, I've seen, <laughs> I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen men leave the gym in, like, with tears in their eyes after legs day, 
Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it's like a bit of an out of body experience sometimes, which it is when you've got them jelly legs. Yeah. And of course, your leg, your legs actually linked in with your with your hormones as well and your testosterone. Production. Oh, of course, so man. That might have something to do with it as well. Why it gets so emotional? I, I told you one time, like I did um, heavy sets of squats followed by heavy sets of leg press, and literally, dude, I, I finished the legs press right. I uh, started sweating. I thought I was gonna throw up in the gym everywhere. I just <laughs> walked silently walked back into the changing rooms like put my clothes on and then walked back to the house and literally the whole way back i was thinking i'm gonna throw up and literally yeah. i managed to yeah. get in the house and like kind of cool down but like i was thinking for like 20 minutes i'm gonna throw up i'm gonna throw up yeah throw up, throw yeah up. and i kept like that i was just felt so sick and like literally dude it like yeah it's just yeah, it's, just, uh, it's, it's your body much. producing that much lactic acid. Yeah, yeah. That much lactic acid. So when your muscle moves, it creates natural waste product, like like any any living thing sort of does, you know. So it creates this lactic acid that <laughs> your body needs to clear out and get shot of. And like, if it can't get rid of it quick enough, or if it's not trained and efficient at getting rid of it, if you've like only ever done strength training, and all of a sudden you jump in like that, and you do like. 10 reps on the leg press and 10 uh, 10 like squats or something like that that's just more lactic acid than your body can make like manage in one go yeah. and while it's working on dissipating your body's just like i'm just gonna eject this out the mouth pretty much like <laughs> coming out this needs to go this needs to go pretty much um i can't i can't i can't, I can't deal with this and that that lactic acid feeling is is absolutely awful for the first time you know yeah. especially when you do feel like you're going to be sick like what you just described there like squats on a leg press if it's heavy enough one set of them will do you. Dude, one yeah, set of them yeah. could leave you feeling absolutely atrocious if you've never really worked your legs before. And it is because these quads are just such a big muscle group. Exactly. You know, um, it's just creating that much lactic acid. It's using that many calories. It's requiring that much effort from you. And of course, you're thinking about concentrating and focusing through the set as well. You know, it just, it, it, it can really take it out of you, you know? Dude, like, uh, yeah. Like, I remember one time I did the bleep test and I threw up afterwards. And uh, mm -hmm. my teacher was like, oh, good job, Daniel. I was thinking, like, good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like, but it's he was like, oh, yeah. you pushed yourself, obviously. It's like, man, it's like, yeah. it's horrible for all. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's like yeah, I've pushed myself, but mate, it's 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 PE. Come on, it's not the Olympics. Know, exactly. You know what I mean? Like yeah, True. I appreciate the I appreciate the uh, the the uh, ac uh, the accommodation, but but yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them things where, like, you don't need to. And, again, that's a bit of a misconception, feeling like we need to work to that point every single session. And we just we, we just absolutely don't. Muscles don't always need to go to failure. And, you know, we don't need to be throwing up in the gym and, like, dragging yourself out on, like, your hands and knees to, to be feeling like you've that your session's been worthwhile, you know. Um, I, I can understand the mindset behind it and people who want to get the most out of their training. It's not for everybody, you know. Yeah, I know. I remember when I did the the bleed test one time in 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 year ten, right? And uh, at that time, I wasn't like, cause I, I used to be like um, in the like cross country club when like like when I was like in maybe I think year six, year seven. So like, I used to be like super in the running for like a period of time. And then when I got to like year ten, I think I was just playing games all the time, and I had like my level of physical fitness just like <laughs> went down massively. But uh. I remember I was doing the belief test and I got like quite far in it. And um, there was another guy who was like, he's like a sporty type and he used to play like football all the time and stuff. And I remember <laughs> it was like me and him were like neck and neck. And I could tell, right? And I'm sure he even told me that he did. He wanted to beat me because he thought that I was just someone who played games all the time and I wasn't like at all fit. <laughs> so he was yeah, like yeah, yeah. embarrassed yeah, yeah. If, if I beat him. So we ended up like going further. And then uh, we we dropped out at the same time, but uh, I thought that yeah. was just quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, when you get a bit of competition going as well, yeah. you get a bit of competition going, man. There was there was one lad there once upon a time who, when I was doing the trampoline classes, I don't know whether yeah, I yeah. mentioned this actually. When I was doing the trampoline classes, there was another lad who I'd brought in to cover the ones that I couldn't be there to run because I was in right. the gym yeah, elsewhere. Yeah. I was doing stuff for Mel, and it 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 did. A conversation transpired between him and some of the members who could plank for longer, you or Rob. So <laughs> we we got our heads together and we ran a session together, the two of us, and yeah, then at the yeah. end, um we got everybody to do a plank off and it got to the point where it was just us two left. And mate, it was one of them where like I'm not dropping he was he was obviously in a place where he wasn't dropping. Yeah. Mate, we both saw eight minutes on the timer wow. and then I was like I was like 
we need to call this. We need to call this. Do you know what I mean? Like at that point, none of us were probably properly planking with the muscles engaged that need yeah, to be. It was yeah, just pure, yeah. pure like de- determination. Because um, it's like I felt that the next day, I really. Oh, but your abs were like absolutely killing, mate. Because like, yeah, dude. Like I say, like I've um. I don't know if you. I don't know if you can. Right. There, you're back. I thought you just frozen for a second. Yeah, I didn't know whether you crashed or whether I did there. Oh, actually, I don't know, yeah. yeah, but but it's, yeah. it's sorted now. But yeah, as I was saying, like my mates have done stuff like that before, and it always gets like really nitpicky because it's like, well, your stomach's <laughs> dipping too much, or like, oh, you know, it's like it's stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, uh, we're doing half planks, are we? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, class, yeah, class, class. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what? A little bit, of, a little bit of competition doesn't hurt. Um, yeah, but of course, remember as well, your biggest competition is always yourself. If somebody else moves up, push a little 2.5 plate on each side of the bar this week and goes for it, happy days, be, cheer them on, be, 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 be pleased for them. Um, try it yourself if you feel like it's man- manageable, but don't sacrifice your form and don't run yourself into the ground trying to keep up with what other people are doing. Yeah. Everybody's fitness journey is different. And that is, again, a quick way to hurt yourself. Like, oh, if he's done that way and I'm doing this way. Mm-hmm. I've seen it done. I've joined it with it myself. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you never end up feeling like you've got a good session out of it. You Dude, never do. And, like, that's it. And, like, uh, it's just stupid stuff, like, where I thought, like, I don't know, like, really, like, stupid, like, things where I've, like, I've, I've actually initially planned to not go that heavy because of X, Y, Z reasons. <laughs> just mm-hmm. Maybe I've got like an injury or I've just thought, you know, I'm just going to do more reps or whatever. But then if there's like a lot of people around me, I'll f- it's so insecure, but I'll feel like nervous that they'll see the, what I'm lifting and think that I can only lift that like amount of weight. Uh-huh. And then so uh-huh. I'll, I'll yeah, lift yeah. more. And then I think like, well, it's so stupid because I don't know these people. Like why who do you yeah. guess? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've yeah. literally done stuff like that before. So you know what, though? It's funny you say that because that, that is obviously something that, that, that's that gone through my head as well on the gym floor, yeah. especially being a PT, where, like, oh, when you're yeah. on, like, when you're on the chest press machine, mate, and you've done, like, a, like a triple drop set and you're literally oh, yeah, yeah. struggling to push, like, a five plate on either side and you're like... And someone walks oh, past and they're looking at you, and you're, like, and, you're, and, and you're like, I can't lift more than this. I promise. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you didn't see, you didn't see the first two sets, honestly. You know, um, but, but 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 yeah. Um, at the end of the day, don't don't compromise your own training, um, because you're in the mindset of what other people might be thinking, and, yeah, exactly. and to appease and to appease them, because if they're training right, they shouldn't be worried about what you're thinking either. Do you know what I mean? Like, go in and, and do your own thing and help each other out like 90% 99% of people in the gym actually do want to do definitely um okay guys cool so a couple more of these to do uh, we'll work across ways we did gluteus maximus uh, no we're doing down over aren't we yeah um so working from the left hand column first we've got um the long one coming down over is the gastronemius which is fancy word for your calf muscle pretty much you know um pretty um easy to underdevelop as well you know, um, especially if we're doing a lot of work again on, on if say like you've got strong quads, so you balance your hamstrings out, you put tension there. You've got to make sure again, you know, can your calves now cope with the tension that's coming from your hamstrings? You know, how often? And again, buddy, I know, I know that you, you, you love your basketball as well. Um, how often do you see someone rush back from a calf injury or an Achilles injury you know not necessarily a full rip or a tear and it just leads to more problems elsewhere because they're not oh, running right they're not God. jumping right yeah. they're not landing right sooner or later you blow a quad muscle um DeMarcus exactly. Cousins is one of the first ones that comes to my mind you know um there was, there was there's a bit of footage out there and you know sort of search for it at your own peril but there's um <laughs> it was it was when he was with Golden State and he planted his foot when he was making a drive to the basket and you you actually see the quad muscle under his skin, detach from the kneecap, and roll up like a fruit winder under the skin, mate. And I tell you what, it's 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 not for the faint-hearted, but a really really interesting. Um, like I say, knowing obviously what's going on in the body and stuff like that, I, I, it's it's kind of interesting as well at the same time. You know, absolutely heartbreaking for the guy. Yeah, you know, he, he's, his career has never been the same since, um, and he's missed out on contracts and you know championship opportunities and stuff like that. But um, I, yeah, being able to being able to see what happens when that because I think when we think about it, when we think a muscle is going to tear, we think that a muscle is going to tear and then just stay exactly where it is. We just like a little bit of a gap between it. It's like no, your muscles are elastic. If they snap, they're gonna twang. Do you know what I mean? I think even like if you've got an injury in one part of your body, 
that can lead to an injury in a completely different part of your body because I'll, I'll give you an exactly. example like when I injured my shoulder I injured my right shoulder so I was like right I'm not gonna lift weights anymore for now because I need to you know take some time off to let the shoulder heal so I thought well I'll start running a lot more instead so when I was running quite a bit I ended up developing a like a slight injury in my right knee because I was obviously okay. having this shoulder injury and I was putting more pressure on that side of my body because my shoulder was injured. And it was yeah, not, probably tensing it up, it yeah. It knocked my gait off. So I was mm-hmm. obviously end up, you know, my stride wasn't as good and then I was end up put, like, starting to have a bit of an issue in my right knee, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely, buddy. You know, like like you say, it can have a big knock-on effect. Um, I, I can't remember the specifics. It was a while ago now, but I remember there was one guy once upon a time that I was working with who had a shoulder injury and it actually it turned out to be something to be with, to do with his calf. You know, it was a, it was a calf issue. And it was just right the way up the body, right up that one side, and um, yeah, it was manifesting in like like a shoulder shoulder problem and, and a shoulder injury as well, you know. So um, again, this applies to everything, but the calf. I mean, even again, it's one you can sit and just rub yourself. You can get your thumbs on your calf and give it a little bit of a push in. Foam roller on the calf is an absolute godsend. Like yeah. um, it's one of my favorite places to do do with a foam roller. It's it's nice and easy to sort of position around the body. And again, if you've never seen a foam roller, I've got one kicking about in here somewhere. There it is. There it is. Our lass has tied it up, so that's why I can't find out. <laughs> there we go. Right. So it, it's pretty much. I've always referred to it as a human rolling pin, where you're pretty much going to get on top of it, put it between you and the ground, and gravity is enough to push your body weight and your muscle onto these little bubbles and actually get in the muscle, yeah. like somebody would do if you were getting like a proper massage or physio or proper like 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 like, like that sort of thing, like proper um, tension release and stuff like that. Um, so again, really, really nice and easy to get under your calf. And if you think like every step you take, your calf's engaging, really, because you're going to be up onto your toes, you're going upstairs. Uh, I'm forever running up the stairs on my toes. Do you know what I mean? Without even thinking about it, I was always more of a sprinter than a long distance runner. So I'm running on my toes a lot more, you know, playing five aside. Again, you cut your, your, your calves get a, a lot of work, you know. So again, not taking time to even stretch them off. Um, eventually, you know, you're going to get some kind of stiffness, some kind of pain that might not actually be anywhere near the calf muscle, you know. So again, easier to keep on top of it. Keep it just, just obviously like trying to keep it nice and loose and, um, and, and, balanced with the rest of your training as well make sure we're getting them in there as well of course mate and um mm-hmm. it's uh also like another good one which is really really simple and you wouldn't even think it is like if you've got a shoulder injury or maybe like a mm-hmm. injury in like that the, the knee your neck maybe you get a mm-hmm. tennis ball right and you put oh, uh, yeah. there's a tennis ball you can get like a you know just a, a ball similar to a tennis ball like that kind of mm-hmm. small size mm-hmm. you can get special balls which are just for that purpose mm-hmm. um and you basically just put it against the wall and you just put it behind where you're injured and you kind of just roll up against it and like kind of yeah. roll your body over it. And that can give you like a really deep uh, kind of massage. So that, that you know, that, that's oh, awesome. yeah. that's brilliant. I used to take a little bit of time every day in the gym to be doing, just be doing a little bit of that round rotator cups yeah, around yeah. the bottom of the neck, around the trap. It works exactly the same as the foam roller that I just, that I just sort of showed you. Um, it's just you can pinpoint it a little bit more into the, the more sort of specifics because, of course, something like that, if you're trying to get it into, like, one little area there, it's nigh on impossible to get it down on the floor and, True, like, yeah. roll in a way where you're not going to get carpet burn on it on your face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, exactly. something like that that Daniel mentioned, like a little tennis ball, a lacrosse ball um, as well, like any anything like that, you know, it just depends how, how much give you want it to have, you know, how sort of pliable you want it to have, because I've tried it with a lacrosse ball, yeah. leaned on it, and I was like, oh, that is far too hard. There's not enough given that, you know, I need something a little bit more, uh, something that is just a little bit softer as well. You know, just uh, gonna, gonna be, a, be a little bit nicer. Um, Okay, Same. guys, so next one across, we've got the uh, latissimus dorsi. So um, that's the big fancy, almost, um, I think it is Latin, actually, um, yeah. word, word, word for it, you know, and again... um. You might have, you might hear it referred. You might hear them referred to as lats a little bit more commonly. I think it's probably something that it's probably a word that me and Daniel have used already this morning. Truth be told, you know, um, lats. So if if you're not sure where those are, it is essentially um, these here that run down. It's pretty much from your armpit down to um, kind of the bottom of your rib cage, I guess. Yeah. You know, but sort of um, round and connect more more onto your spine. Um, I just seen Gaz's Gaz's last comment. Good job now, clean it up, man. Oh, do you know what? I, when when you're a PT and you've made somebody throw up, 
if they're sick, it's not going to be cleaning it up with you. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, if someone says, I'm going to be sick, I need to get to the toilet. I'm like, go, man, go. Go, I, know, I don't yeah, want to be yeah, cleaning exactly. up after God, you, yeah? Know, yeah. Not. So one of them, like, if they made it to the toilet, I was a little bit like, yeah, I made you sick. <laughs> but then, yeah, if they didn't make it that far, I was like, oh, I regret this. I've got to clean that up now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, trying to get it off them rubber mats isn't there. Uh, it, it, it's not easy and it's not nice. But, uh, yeah, yeah, nice uh, yeah good, good job now cleaning up. It's uh, <laughs> something that I wish I could have said. Um, co coming, so coming back to the lats, the way that I remember where they are and what their names are um, is, of course, thinking about um, if, if, a, if you're familiar with the term sort of lateral, lateral movement, moving side to side, anything to do with that. So uh, lateral movement, your lats are on the side, you know, that's the way that I remember them. Um, and they are going to do a lot of um, like pulling movements, chin ups, pull ups, that sort of thing. Um, and like Daniel mentioned earlier on, when it comes to an aesthetic point of view and just thinking about um, physique and um, sort of especially bodybuilding shows and stuff like that, the aim pretty much is to have what they class as like the V-shape or the taper mm -hmm. where your lats are really, really wide, you know, where you look like you, you that's why you're walking around like you've got a carpet under each arm, you know, and then... Um, it's, it's almost like, have you ever seen somebody who walks around like that that doesn't really have big lats? You know, where they're walking course. around like they are carrying like yeah, astro yeah. yeah. I call it an invisible lat syndrome. That's what I, that's what I call that one, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's definitely. It, but, um, yeah, again, like you said, buddy, it's a big muscle and it's probably it's probably a bigger muscle than a lot of people give it, uh, give it credit for as well. Yeah, it's like if you look at somebody like Bruce Lee, perfect example, right? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, he was like 130 pounds, but he looked pretty sizable like pretty muscular because uh <laughs> of his lats so his lats were like so big you know you must see that like when he's doing the like muscle poses with his lats out and that's you know yeah yeah in terms of like his ratios and his proportions absolutely absolutely bang on but again yeah, yeah. absolutely bang on for for his career do you know what i mean it was perfect his body was like a machine built for what it was that he needed it to do you know yeah, and yeah. and that, that's really really specific training it's it's obviously having an end end game in in mind and not again when it comes down to thinking about your own training like if he'd have looked at somebody else and gone and done their training and had their physique he might not have gone to be gone on to be who he, he turned out to be yeah you know he might, he might not have been considered the best in the world at what he did at, at, and, and all of that you know just because if he'd had if he trained somebody else's way well he's training for somebody else's body and somebody else's lifestyle you know so again it just shows you that you don't have to be massive. You don't have to be doing what somebody else is doing to be in good shape, you know, and to be um, certainly to be aesthetic. Uh, okay, guys. So fourth column in uh, from the top row, we've got tricep coming back over, uh, coming down over. So I mentioned earlier on, it works in opposition with the bicep. The bicep will shorten and bring the arm in towards the head. The tricep will shorten and bring the arm back out and, uh, and, and sort of like extend that arm. Yeah, so of course we've got flexing. And, and extending, you know, bicep does one, tricep does the other. And again, like I mentioned earlier on, your tricep is actually three, three heads. So whereas a lot of people, when they want bigger arms, they'll go and start doing a load of bicep curls and hitting different ranges on the biceps when really you'd be better, normally better off developing your triceps a little bit more and padding out the back of your arm, mm -hmm. fill out those like t-shirt sleeves and stuff like that a little bit more. If that's what you're going for, do you know what I mean? Like course, I think yeah. a, a strong, well-developed tricep looks looks better than a bicep in my opinion totally, like yeah. you look at somebody like chris hemsworth especially in the first couple of thor films i'm like those those triceps look super oh yeah crazy. The, the, shape, the, the shape that he was in and has always been in to be fair yeah, yeah. you know but you can see that you you look at a lot of the biggest guys and you'll realize that they've got they've got triceps that match the bicep you know um Something like like I like I've said to Hatham before. Um, Hulk Hogan didn't get like the twenty four inch pythons by um just training his biceps. You know, exactly, you do yeah. you do that that, that that all around sort of training. Definitely, um and, yeah. and yeah, so the tricep makes up the back of your arm and and like I say, works pretty much in in opposition to the um to the to the bicep to move the elbow joint. Um okay, so two rows of uh, two columns across from there. Um, second second line down, we've got pectorals coming down over. Um, pectorals, if you've never heard of them before, your pecs, maybe it's essentially your chest, isn't it? It's your, it's your chest muscle. Yep. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll get a good look at these in, in a second. And those do sort of hugging movements, a lot of pushing movements, any of that sort of thing as well. And, and like I said, a lot of the time when we think that those muscles aren't developed enough because we're hunched over, really, you know, we need to, if we work on the back, 
that chest will actually come through a little bit more. Uh, it'll lift a little bit more. It'll look better. And then you'll get an idea of actually what your posture is actually like and what muscle groups do need developing, you know, like I'd say rather than saying, oh, I'm just going to jump in and do a load of chest. Um, because you know what, I've I've met guys over the years that I just love doing chest. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they just love chest day, and and I, it's never uh, like I say, it's just never it's never been one of my favourites. Um, like I say, I think as much to do with getting um sort of niggles in the shoulder from time to time, especially when your form's not right and stuff like that. It was just just one of them that never really um it was I always did it. It was just mm-hmm. never my favourite, you know. Um, okay, and then if we come across another three columns across. From the top row, the last one we've got to do is um, the abdominals. Yeah, so um, you, you might have heard uh, rectus abdominis is one that you might have heard before, but we might call it the abdominals or maybe just even the abs, mm-hmm. you know, if, you, if, you've, if you've heard of abs. Now, there's I think there's a bit of a misconception out there that core training means abs <laughs> because, of course, a strong core is often associated with something like a six-pack. Or something like that, you know, that V shape at the bottom of the mm-hmm. six pack, you know, where where sort of like your your waistband would be, when really, you know, your abdominals are just a thin layer of muscle that make up the front wall of your of your core, pretty much. And I likened it uh, before too. If you're looking at, if say if you were looking at a house, I remember. Hey later, buddy. Um, if you were looking at a, if you were looking at a house, the the front wall would be the abs pretty yeah. much and like when you're thinking about a house you don't just think about the front wall you think about the full thing so when we think about core we don't just think about abs we think about the full thing and of course like i mentioned earlier on that's your low that's your lower back that's your obliques that's your diaphragm you know yeah. that's your pel- pelvic floor everything else in there under like those, those deep lying core muscles as well that's all core abs is literally like literally the the two like the muscles that is your six pack, you know. Yeah, so we've all we've all got them. We've all got the six pack. It's just a case of what your body composition is and how much body fat you've got on top of them. And like disclaimer, it doesn't take much body fat at all for your abs to not be visible. Do you know what I mean? Like it really doesn't. Like you're talking like in just into double figures body fat percentage. Like most of us are, you know. And and those abs aren't going to be particularly visible, you, you know? know. So again. Yeah, it, it always kind of um, seems weird to me when you see uh, those bodybuilders. Like, n- thing is, right? It, that's one of my my biggest um, gripes with, uh, with with modern bodybuilding is like that. Uh, back in the day, you think in, in, during Arnold's time, you know, and we've talked about um, you know pumping iron and stuff. And Arnold's physique, I think, looks really cool. It looks really good. Uh, it does, and it's it's aged well as well. It exactly, still looks good today. Exactly, but if you look. It, the modern bodybuilders, fair enough, that's their thing, and obviously a lot of time and dedication goes into it. But it looks a bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of that look, the because it seems like the, the 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 gut kind of seems like kind of swollen, and it doesn't look too natural where like the abs are like protruding, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think they look a little bit depleted as well. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? They are depleted. Like there's no there's no like two ways about it. They are depleted, but they do look a lot more sort of shrunken, and you know, especially understanding that they're not eating anything other than just for fuel really and they feel that what fuel their body you know that they maybe are deficient in in, in, in in quite a few things and you know i'm looking at somebody on stage these days like mr olympia yeah and you you do you compare it back to somebody like arnold from like the like the 70s or the 80s and you're like to me arnie looked healthier than, yeah, than like that really really depleted but 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 like you say like um uh, uh, you can go to most gyms these days and you will see at least a guy with better abs than Arnold had when he was winning Mr. Olympia seven years in a row. Like, it's just it's just the way that the, the focus seems to have shifted. You know, this idea of, like, it, it almost used to be, like, sort of bodybuilding was about size and symmetry and all of that, and it still kind of is, but there's almost, like, that, 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 that element of, like, beach body to it as well, you know, this, like, every... Every single muscle is as defined as possible rather than trying to make the body look as grand as, and majestic as you possibly can. That's you know, true. And I think, I think, yeah. yeah, it's a really good point, dude. And I think another one uh, like Arnold is uh, Frank Zane. Um, from back in the day, he, he, he has similar physique, really, really cool. Mm-hmm. But like, I think that uh, it, it, it is that thing where it, it became not about um, symmetry, and mm-hmm. um you know like the, as you're saying like the the composition it became more about like just how big can you get the muscles 
Yeah, how big can you get the muscles? Yeah, and how little body fat can you have on top of them exactly. so we can see them better? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, when, when when we're thinking about abs, it's just important to remember that we are just talking about those those strips, and it is two strips that run alongside each other, which is why if you've ever seen anybody with a six pack, but their the abs are slightly staggered, mm-hmm. that is why because it's not one muscle, it's two sheets of muscle, you know, that can move, and some people they're just slightly offset. So your six pack, one side's going to sit a little bit higher than the other. Um, yeah. But yeah, that is your abs. When we're talking about abs, we're not talking about core training. We're not talking about the core. We're literally just thinking about that sheet of muscle that literally makes up um, your six pack, really. And again, you know, contrary to um, a lot of popular belief, we do all have abs. You know, it's just a case of where where they are and um, how much work it's going to take to be able to bring them through. If that's something that's even important to you, you know, because to some people, it's really not. It's really not. Strong men don't have time to be bothered about how visible their abs are. Oh, yeah. they, want, they want more mass. They want more calories in so they can move more weight. You know, So again, depending on what your goals are, abs might not even be something that you want to work towards. But we do all have them. Um, and like I say, we're just remembering that when, when it comes to core training, we don't just want to be doing stuff like a load of sit-ups. You know, I've seen it done, a load of sit-ups. These muscles here end up really tight. And again, you just end up sort of hunching forward without realizing oh, it. Yeah tension on your pelvis which throws you back off and do you know what it's 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 from doing something that you feel like might be might be good for you like get up and do like 50 sit-ups every morning if you don't balance that out with anything else sooner or later it's just going to give you give you some tension that's uh that your body's not going to uh, respond so well to of course buddy yeah okay yeah, uh, go on buddy sorry what were you saying no, i'm just saying just agreeing with you mate yeah yeah, yeah, no, 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 no worries, buddy. Um, so if you don't mind spinning on to the yeah. um, next slide, then mate, we can get a little bit of a look at um, and start to visualize where these actually are in the body. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got, of course, the front view. We can see, um, obviously, I'd sort of used myself as a bit of a dummy as we were working our way through. But of course, we've got the deltoids on the shoulders and we've got the bicep down the front of the arm. The pecs sit on the chest. Um, the pecs are essentially, you know, like the human equivalent. If you've ever bought a chicken breast, you know, really, yeah. if you think about it that way, that's the way. Like, do you know what? I can't, I can't help. It's gonna sound a bit sadistic now. I say this out loud. <laughs> when, 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 I, when, I, when I cook a chicken and I'm pulling it apart, yeah. I can't, I can't not acknowledge that. Like, okay, that's that's a that's a thigh muscle. That was like that 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 that's like a breast muscle. But just thinking about how it sort of translates across, um, yeah. just um, just just some of the sort of um, just took me by surprise a little bit when I started thinking about these things. Uh, but yeah, pectorals, these uh, sit, sit on your chest. Um, of course, again, while, while we're on it, you know, um, it's one of those where I've had women say to me, what do I do about pec training? When obviously, um, you know, they might be thinking about, oh, I don't want... Um, I don't want it to interfere with me bust and stuff like that. You know, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to have like that manly sort of shape to me, mm-hmm. you know, which is where again, any, any resistance training, I guess, not just the pecs when it comes to it, you're better off in having that muscle engaged and tight rather than not, you know? Um, but, 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 but yeah, definitely. There's no, um, there's no sort of um, right and a wrong way to do it either. You know, um, if it's a case of, it might not fit your goals that you want much more upper body strength, but, but yeah, having all of those muscles working is, is of course going to, going to be more beneficial than saying, do you know what? I'm going to skip training my chest. Um, because of course, um, because of my bust and stuff like that as well, which I've, I've, I've heard it before, you know, like I don't, I don't need, I don't need to train my chest. You're like, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still going to make you do it. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, okay guys. So, um, like I just mentioned there, the abdominals, um, is, is pretty much the six pack. Um, and the quadriceps, like I've mentioned before, is the, the big collection of muscles down the down the front of the leg as well. Um, okay, looking at the, uh, the the posterior view, the back view, we've got the traps. These ones in your shoulder, and you can actually see how they sort of um, flare, how it flares out to attach onto the shoulder joint, and then it sort of sort of tapers back in and connects sort of halfway onto the spine, and uh, sort of like halfway down the spine as well. Um, the tricep. I've got no idea where that arrow is pointing to, uh, but the tricep is the back of the arm, uh, like we mentioned earlier on. The gluteus maximus, bum muscle pretty much, um, the biggest muscle in the body, hamstring, back of your thigh, uh, and of course your gastrocnemius is is your calf um, and, and your calf muscle as well, yeah. So cool, happy days. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit more of an idea of how those muscles lay on the body and understand how they actually work work uh, your body through certain ranges and help your body move as well, you know. Um, 
Cool. So let's roll on then, buddy. If you don't mind, yeah, we will go to um, the next slide. Because of course, if you ever need to come back and revisit that slide, you can just pull this video up and pause it there and take as much time as you need to. Uh, or, or of course, even even like a little Google search where you just like major muscles in the body will give you an idea of the main ones that you're probably going to be working on developing throughout your training. And um, of course, there are other muscles in the body and um, that we don't need to worry about too much for now. Um, so yeah, these are the main muscles and these are the muscles that again, you might see on machines. If you go to the gym, you go to a resistance machine and it says this one works your hamstrings, you know, or this one works your abs. And they should, they should tell you which, which, which muscle you're actually going to be working. So again, you can, you can get an idea whether you're feeling it in the right place or not, you know, and whether, um, yeah, you may be putting tension elsewhere in the body. Uh, okay guys, cool. So that was a good little look at, um, skeletal muscles then. So, like I say, the muscles that we that we control, um, they're the only muscles in the body that are voluntary, actually. Um, you know, so even things like when you're blinking, you know, blinking's voluntary um, to an extent. You know, you can choose to blink. Um, so, so again, that's a voluntary muscle. Um, but, again, you know, anything that, like, if you're walking down the stairs, you're using skeletal muscle. It's not just when we're training as well, you know, um, which is so common. We think about our form in the gym when we're lifting heavy stuff. And then, like, day to day, we'll go to get something out the bottom cupboard in the house, and our form just looks atrocious. Do you know what I mean? Like, we don't try to bend our knees. We don't try and keep our back flat. And it, it is, you know, it's sometimes the other 23 hours of the day that are, that are, that are training your body to be a certain sure. way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, like I say, that was, that was our skeletal muscle. Um, then we had our cardiac muscle, which we looked at last week, where we were looking at the way that the heart um, works, getting blood flow around the body and stuff like that. And then we've got smooth muscle as well, which we haven't really looked at too much just yet. Um, and that is um, found in the, the walls of your uh, hollow internal organs and your blood vessels as well. You know, so your arteries, your veins, your small intestine, uh, your, obviously your large intestine as well, your stomach, um, your liver, pancreas, all of it is smooth muscle. Because, you know what, when we look at the picture in a diagram of these muscles, they're not moving. Of course, they're not moving. You know, we're looking yeah. at them on a picture. But it's it's then easy to forget that throughout the day, those muscles are functioning and doing their job. And like like your intestines are contracting to squeeze, squeeze food through. Your stomach is working to digest food. Like it's they're, they're active all day long and you don't need to tell them to do that. You know, you don't need to tell your stomach to digest food. Um, it is totally, totally in, involuntary, you know. Um, and, and again, thinking about even just the veins, the arteries and stuff like that, that's all classed as like sort of smooth muscle as well, you know. So um, the int interesting one there and, and uh, interesting to look at those, those different sort of categories of muscles and, and, and how they're sort of bunched together, basically, basically by the job that they do, really. You know, so it's not just a case of when we talk about muscle in the body, it's not just... You know the biceps and anything that looks good in a string vest and a pair of shorts. You know it's uh, it's 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 everything. You know it's it's all inclusive pretty much. Um. Okay, guys. So what we'll do because I'm just just aware of the time as well. We we've got another crossword to do. Uh, another word search. Sorry. Um. On the next slide. So if you don't mind, just flick into the next slide, please. Go we're going to do the same again. It's a little bit smaller, but we're going to do the same for organs. So we're talking about our internal organs now. And we're going to, again, just look through, pick out any that you can, any that you think that you've um, come across before, any that you recognize. Um, and then, yeah, in just a couple of minutes, we'll we'll go through, we'll work out the answers. And, of course, if you want to pause it and take a little bit longer, then by all means do. But we'll not hang about on this too long. Um, and then, like I say, we'll, 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 we'll move on as well. But it's funny because these, these organs that we've got, of course, obviously – like the rest of the body, a large portion of them is water, which is why when we're dehydrated and we're not getting enough water in our diet and in our lifestyle, um, of course, we can have those organs start to, start to suffer and start to fail. Now, obviously, the first one that you might think of might be the kidneys and the, and, and, and the livers, but everything, you know, the brain, the brain is about 70% water, mm -hmm. you know? So if you're dehydrated, it's no wonder that your brain isn't going to function sort of at, at the optimal level, you know, we've got to, we've got to be as, as hydrated as our body needs pretty much, which is essentially going to the toilet and everything coming out nice and clear, really, you know, um, which is easier said than done, 
you know, um, finding ways to make sure that we're drinking water, you know, be it getting an app on your phone that reminds you from time to time, um, be it getting a two litre bottle that you need to make sure is gone by the end of the day. You know, I've got, um, I've got for me, for me new water bottle that I've got, it's a, it's a digital lid where it'll tell you the water temperature as well, which is, which is pretty handy because I, I prefer me water a little bit cooler yeah. you know like rather than at room temperature but it beeps it beeps if it's if it's been too long since you opened the bottle for a drink of water it beeps like come on get some water in you like i'm over awesome. here i'm over here it's awesome when you know that it's supposed to do it when your yeah. water bottle starts beeping in the middle of the night and you've got no idea oh, why right. and scares yeah. the life out of you okay. on the bedside table and yes. wakes the missus up mate not so awesome definitely yeah, not so awesome that, yeah yeah, I was, I was like, what on earth is that? And my watch is turned off. <laughs> I was like, something over here on my bedside table is nappy about something. But yeah, it was my water bottle in the middle of the night saying you haven't drink, drank enough water. So um, it's a fun- function best used in the day, but um, it, it's handy, you know. So yeah, we've got to make sure we're getting yeah. water in for, for muscles, for, for obviously for, for rest. Um, for, for obviously clearing out waste product in our body as well, toxins and stuff like that. But even just in terms of sort of organ function, you know, and getting getting each of those organs doing their job and what they need to do, um, we 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 need to be um getting plenty of water in and staying nice and nice and hydrated as well as always. Um, right, buddy. So we may as well spin on to the next slide then, dude. If you don't mind pulling up the the answer slide for the yeah, the, the, the the organs word search. Same again. I'll just I'll just work work my way through. Um, and and again, if you if there's any of them that you haven't come across before, guys, by all means shout up, stick it in the chat, and we're gonna have a little natter about them as well. Um, I say I don't mind if you need to shoot and get that dude. Um, yeah, no worries. I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. see if uh, anyone's going to get it first. Yeah, it. no worries, man. Cool, cool guys. Um, so when we're talking about um, uh, so, so sorry, when we're on this uh, this slide here, we can see. Yeah, no worries, dude. Um, from from the top row, we can see intestines. Of course, it was one that I mentioned just a second ago. Um, of course, um, like I say, it's it's to do with producing um. It, it, producing waste pretty much it's processing food um actually some hormone production actually goes on in the intestine as well i, I think it's serotonin um which is which is a feel-good hormone actually comes in the it comes in the in the gut and in the and, and, and in the intestine which is where a lot can be said for um being mindful of our gut bacteria and making sure that we're getting good bacteria in and getting probiotics and stuff like that and making sure that the the bacteria in our gut is 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 good for the job and you know not going to cause bloating and not cause pain and 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 all of that sort of thing as well um then we've got the pancreas so um we in fact we've got a little layer uh, diagram next where we able to get a little bit of a look where they are so i'll go through that a little bit more once daniel's back so we've got uh, the pancreas the next line down we've got the esophagus which if it's if you're not sure it's 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 sort of like the food pipe from from your throat down to your stomach that's your esophagus and um, we've got the liver of course which is um um obviously got a lot of different functions and and suffers a lot if we are um drinking too much you know if we've got a lot of alcohol in our diet the liver's going to suffer and um, of course we've got the kidneys to do processing water um, and then we've got the stomach on that bottom row which of course is where all your food goes and yeah i said um in your stomach actually uh, dissolves that food and breaks it down so your body can use it um, uh, for a little bit easier, you know. Um, now, your stomach acid would actually, if you put it on your bare skin, it would just melt right through. Um, so that shows you how strong um, the, like the lining of your stomach is. Um, yeah, so so um, yeah, your stomach is able to break it down a lot more than, than you'd think. You know, I actually read the other day, um, this idea of, you know, if you eat chewing gum and swallow it and it stays in your system for seven years, nah, your stomach, your stomach acid just absolutely obliterates it. And uh, I'm, I'm absolutely not suggesting that we go out and start eating and swallowing a load of chewing gum, but um, it doesn't get stuck in your system like the way that you uh, might, might have been, been uh, brought up to believe. Um, okay, guys, cool, cool. So welcome back, dude. Welcome back, buddy. Um, interesting fact. Just before we spin on, I it wasn't. Um, I wasn't sure whether you were aware of it or not. I was just saying to the guys that um, obviously when you when you you're getting obviously eating and the food's going into your stomach, the acid is working to dissolve that food up. Now, if you were to put that acid onto your skin, it would just go straight through. You know, that acid would just burn straight through your skin. And um, like I said, it, it just shows how strong the, uh, the the lining of the stomach actually is. You know, and um, fun fact that I found out the other day. 
chewing gum doesn't stay in your system for seven years when you eat it. Your stomach acid absolutely obliterates it, and uh, and and then and there's no more to it, pretty much. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I have heard that actually, it, and, and uh, it's pretty insane to think that that's in your body. Like to think yeah, yeah, that you've yeah. literally got like some stomach acid, which is like that. Like you just carry that around with you. Yeah, I think I think that actually served as part of the inspiration for Alien and the Xenomorph. Makes sense. Because there's one scene in particular that I can think of where two of them pull a third one apart, so that the 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 blood of the third one will eat through the floor and so they can escape. And that that is where the inspiration came from, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, right, guys. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'll do the ones coming across ways before we move on. So, of course, we've got the brain. The brain is um, essentially our, I think of it as like, if, if our heart is our battery, you know, our brain's like our CPU, really, isn't it? You know, um, that's, that's the way that I sort of think about it. Your brain, anything you do, especially movement, um, any sort of choice that you make that then you you then carry out, it, it's coming from the brain, you know. Um me and Daniel could probably sit here and talk all day about the idea and the concept of the self and and and, and oh, where the self okay. is and 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 you know is 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 it, is, it, is it the brain is it is it the soul and you know what yeah yeah we could be on we could be on absolutely all day like that but of course the brain is um sort of our command center it is where all the all the um signals are coming from which again you know it's 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 a funny one I've had people that have been really really sort of muscularly strong over the years. But they just hit this point where they just absolutely burn out and their strength just seems to like go off a cliff. And they're like, I don't get it. I don't know why I'm not as strong as I was. Like, I'm, I'm, I can't bench half the amount that I used to. I'm like, your nervous system is shot. Like, your nervous system is absolutely burned out. You haven't let your nervous system recover. So your muscles, great, they can manage that weight. Your brain can't send a strong enough signal to that muscle to lift the weight because the nervous system's burned out. You know, it's tired. You need to give that a rest as well, which is where, like I say, rest is part of the program and uh, your brain plays a big, big part of it, obviously. Uh, okay, then working our way across, we've got the we've got the spleen. And then right on the right-hand side, just coming in from that right-hand column, uh, about halfway down, we've got the lungs as well, you know, which, of course, having looked at the, uh, the cardiac cycle last week, we can see how the lungs bring oxygen into the body um, and... and, and how they sort of get that into the bloodstream and get it round to the muscles where it needs to be, you know. Uh, and, and like I say, making sure that we're bringing, bringing plenty of oxygen into those lungs. And, um, of course, if we are suffering with our diet, and especially if we're a heavy smoker, uh, of course, your lungs are going to gonna start to suffer as well. Now, again, fun little fact before we move on, if you took your lungs uh, and opened them up, um, hopefully lungs of somebody who didn't need them anymore and um, get, get some lungs open them up stretch them as far as they can they would actually be the same size as a regulation tennis court um like which is insane to say that it's like these airbags that are inside you i mean literally when you breathe in they inflate and when you breathe out they they, they sort of deflate and if you watch somebody's breathing of course you can see this you can see someone's chest rise as they breathe in you can see somebody's um chest fall as they breathe out and do you know what mate when i used to do a bit of scuba diving it used to fascinate me where i could take a breath and hold and because i'd inflated my lungs you'd rise a little bit in the water yes and then like then you'd breathe out and because you were deflating your lungs you'd actually start to sink again a little bit you know so you could use your breathing to actually Quite control crazy, your buoyancy, really. yeah. which which was yeah absolutely amazing and um again if you because of the pressure if you hold your breath at the at, at depth um, the air bubble, the air tries to expand and it can actually rip your lungs. Um, you're actually told if you run out of air, don't hold your breath. You need to start slowly exhaling outwards and, and like shoot for the surface, but like slowly exhale outwards as you go. Don't hold your breath because at that pressure, you can actually cause damage to your lungs, which was, yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't anything that of course I'd ever thought about. Thought yeah, they said if, you, if, you, if you're ever out of oxygen, um, do not hold your breath underwater because any oxygen that is in there will just try and expand as you come up to the surface and will, will like I say, cause cause internal damage and stuff like that. If you're coming up to the surface and you think that that air is trying to expand as the pressure gets less, it will rip clean, clean through your lungs if you had too much oxygen in there. So yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a slow, it's a slow breathing out as you head for the surface as fast as your little legs will kick at that point pretty much. But yeah, it was, again, I, I, I found it really, really interesting, you know, and um, it wasn't anything I'd ever considered. Um, okay, guys, so if you don't mind just spinning us onto the last slide then, please, bud, um, we can just get an idea of where some of these um, 
organs actually sort of sit in the body, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, um, it's cool. So we can work our way down, really. So of course we've got the esophagus that I've mentioned before, which is um, the 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 sort of highway for the food from your mouth down into the stomach, pretty much, which can take um, can take up to like six or seven seconds actually. You know, work working its way down into your stomach. So yeah, that's, uh, when you swallow within seven seconds, whatever you've just swallowed is down in your stomach, and it is hopefully anyway. You know, unless you're choking on something, it's down in your stomach, and your uh, and, and your stomach will just set the work about it. And um, of course, the trachea works pretty much the same, but for your lungs, it brings the oxygen in, uh, and that's the lets the oxygen pass down that way. Because of course, you don't want your oxygen going down the same tube as your food down into your stomach. Um, and and like I say, it's 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 pretty pretty sort of complex really the way that the back of your mouth and your throat branches off into the nose and the trachea and where does the food go where did you drink go when you drink it um you know and, and sort of splits off into all these different sections but that's that's what the trachea is it's all to do with breathing um just like your lungs are you know just like we were on on about a second ago and coming back to our little um question on that heart quiz last week where we said where is the heart and it is central you know it's slightly over to the left but we can say there that it's central it's actually between the two lungs as well sitting behind where the, the breastplate would be, you know. So that's where the lungs are. Of course, the, lung, the lungs are responsible for bringing oxygen in and getting it around the system as well, you know. And then we've got the, this, this sort of um, bigger mass underneath, which is the liver, you know, like we sort of mentioned earlier on. Um, it's going to get a lot of, a lot of whack when, um, when we're drinking a lot of alcohol. Um, if you've ever heard of cirrhosis, um, of, or, or like liver cirrhosis, especially it's 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 scarring of the liver pretty much due to um too too much alcohol usually, um but the liver the liver pretty much um it regulates chemical levels in the blood, um and excretes the product that we call bile pretty much, you know and then helps carry away um waste products from the liver moving it and then um all the blood leaving the the stomach and the intestines passes through the liver as well. You know, so it's got a couple of different jobs. Um, and, and again, we've got to make sure that we're looking after it. It's, it's hydrated and our diet is is sustaining it as well. You know, because again, when we're thinking about if we're not getting enough protein in our diet, like a lot of us aren't. Um, and now we know that, of course, protein is used to repair cells, including bones, organs, muscles. How are those muscles going to work properly when your diet doesn't support them? You know, think about it that way. Now that you know what 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 role your food is playing, and you know what is actually going on in your body, we need to start thinking about pairing up what your body needs, um, to do what you need your body, to, uh, what you need your body to do. You know, um. So yeah, that that was the liver. Um. So we've got the liver there. Um. Then of course we've got the gallbladder a little bit further down. Gallbladder is a little bit of a strange one. It's not anything that um, off the top of my head, it's not anything I've sort of come across in like issues with too much over the years. Um, but it sits sort of just under the liver and it stores the bile uh, produced by the liver pretty much. Um, after meals, the gallbladder is uh, empty and flat like a de deflated balloon. Uh, and before a meal, the gall gallbladder is going to be um, full of bile and about the size of a small pear. You know, so again, just thinking about it. It's amazing, to be honest, that again, you know, when we, when we say these diagrams, there's plenty of space in between the organs and stuff like that, isn't there? Like when if you've ever seen like um, someone on the operating table or seen somebody get opened up, you know, it don't look like that. You know, it's all jam packed in there. It makes me like I can't get a jigsaw out of the box and then get all the pieces back in. Like if I was operating on somebody's lower intestine or something like that, I'd be like, how on earth, how on earth does all of this go back in? You know, it, 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 it just it, work as well. Like how's that all like squished together and it still works like all fine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much crammed in there as much yeah. as possible. Um, but, but, but yeah, it all still works perfectly. You know, um, the majority of the time, yeah. um, it is, it, it's a little bit mind blowing really. Uh, okay, so then we had, uh, of course, that was the gallbladder. Then we've got the kidneys, um, which is a lot more to do with, of course, processing um, like like water and stuff like that. So they pretty much um, cleanse cleanse in the blood of toxins, transform waste into urine, pretty much. Um, each kidney weighs about 160 grams and gets rid of one and uh, one and to one and a half liters of urine a day. Yeah, so two kidneys together can filter 200 liters of fluid every day. Which is which is crazy, really? What's that? A hundred, a hundred two liter bottles of pop, you know, two kidneys doing that every single day. Um, and fun fun fact, actually, if you had a kidney that was failing, and you needed a transplant, and you got a new kidney put in, they don't take the old one out. 
they just leave it in there. So there are people walking around That's out there weird, with, with three kidneys. Um, and I don't know if it's a case of, do you know what? Hopefully having two kidneys might help restart the other one and boot it back up. Um, I don't really know what the benefit of that would be because I can't imagine you can just give somebody their kidney back and say, Thank, thanks for the lend. You know, like, cheers for lending us your kidney for a, for a little bit. But again, I did think that was interesting that there's, Coming back to the space that's in there, there's obviously space to leave your kidney in there that's not doing anything, you know. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Just as a well. random kidney just kicking about. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Here comes the three kidney kid. Yeah, on his way down the street. Um, but 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 yeah, you know, I did think that was really interesting, and that was one that um, that was one that Mel told us that actually. Um, okay, so we've done kidneys. Um, duodenum isn't one that you really need to worry about too much it's more it's the entryway to the small intestine pretty much it's sort of like that first step it's almost like the again thinking about it like a house house it's almost like the little it's almost like the front porch you know um the the the, the duodenum and i'm just going to make sure that i'm uh duodenum. just going to make sure that i give you the most accurate uh, idea of what that actually does because like I say, it's one of the little bit more um, obscure ones. So it's the first segment of the small intestine. It's largely responsible for the continuous break and down process. Um, lower in the intestine, we get the parts that are mainly responsible for the absorption of nutrients. So that's pretty much the part that's breaking down your food. Um, once your stomach has sort of dissolved it and sort of done, done whatever it needs to do. And then as it passes through the rest of your, your system, that's more about absorbing whatever's left in your system so it can go and do the job that it needs to do pretty much. Um, of course, we talked about the stomach um, and we, we know what the job of the stomach is. The spleen's a bit of a strange one because it always seems to be something like, they seem to rupture quite a lot. Whenever I hear the word spleen, it's always got the word ruptured in front of it. And I, don't I know, know that's, I that's the only time I've ever heard it mentioned. Is it, yeah? Yeah, um, so the spleen has got um, some important functions that inv uh, it fights invading germs in the blood. So um, the spleen contains infection fighting white blood cells. Um, it controls the level of blood cells, um, it, which is all of them, you know, white uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. Um, it filters the blood and removes any old or damaged red blood cells as well. Yeah, so um, same again, not the most glamorous job, not the most interesting job in there, but you know what, we, we, we'd struggle without it. You know that that yeah. regeneration of red blood cells and and controlling the um, level of sort of blood cells in the blood as well because it's actually um, it's a sort of condition I guess you know and I don't I don't believe it's even one specific condition but it's it's been observed in people that you know um, your immune system can overreact to an infection as well it can overreact to what's going on if you've got too many blood cells there all trying to attack. Um, all trying to attack this one, this one invader, this one foreign body, you know, this, this germ, wherever it's come from. Um, that is where you can actually end up with a lot of extra issues. You know, your body's overworking. You can end up with stress. You can end up crashing. Um, you know, because like I say, your body is just totally, totally um, overreacting. Um, and sometimes that can just come from um, raised levels of blood cells, you know, which is why, again, the spleen is so important in sort of regulating them as well. Uh, okay. Where are we? So we've done the spleen. Do the pancreas while we're on. There we go. So uh, the pancreas, pancreas um, works do, during digestion quite a lot, um, and it, it sort of um, makes it releases enzymes. So if you've ever heard of the word like en enzymes, it's pretty much um, pretty much chemical chemical messengers that sort of travel travel through your blood. It's it's sort of like they'll um, like digestive enzymes in your mouth will help sort of um, break your food down as well and start to dissolve stuff in your mouth. Of course, like, like, like we say, it's like um, if you eat something, of course, your stomach starts to break it down. Like, but if you if you put like, just for example, if you put like skips in your mouth, they dissolve, don't they? You know, like this idea, of, like put, put, put one on your tongue and watch it dissolve. And it's the same with a lot of stuff like um, some sugary sweets, like you can just put them on your tongue and in the mouth and they'll dissolve just from those digestive en enzymes as well. Um, but yeah, your pancreas is creating these sort of enzymes. And like I say, it's messengers in your blood that goes around and tells, pretty much tells your body what to do um, yeah. in the sense that they can't be signals that can't be sent through the nervous system will often be sent through these sort of enzymes and these chemical signals in your blood to, okay, start dissolving that, start doing that, you know, like little, like little triggers and signals for the body. 
Um, the appendix is a, is, a, is a bit of a weird one. The appendix is, is a little bit out there because, you know, there's an argument that we don't really need it anymore. Um, and yeah, well, the, that, that's what I've heard that as well a few times, you know, and then obviously it's funny considering that a lot of people end up having like really bad appendixitis and stuff, don't they? So it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's like interesting. If your appendix bursts, you can, you can die. It can be fatal. You know, I, I, um, I, I had a mate dude just over the pandemic who got appendixitis, had to get his appendix out, and while he had his appendix out and he was recovering, they told him he had fucking COVID as well at the same time. Oh, so he was totally no, goose like for a while. Yeah. Oh, he, that's rough. He was, he's, that's right. rough he's, he's fine now, like, but, but, uh, yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Oh, like excellent. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, what they say when it rains, it pours, mate. Yeah, true that. Sure, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, the, the the appendix. I guess really what we use it now. Um, the the most common sort of belief is that it's just like a storehouse for good bacteria, and it can sort of help your stomach reboot. It can help, um, especially after you've had sort of like um, illnesses like diarrhea and stuff like that as well, where your body might need to repopulate like your gut and stuff like that. Um, especially again those lower intestines and stuff like that. So um, yeah, a lot of the time. Um, we, we don't really use the appendix for, for, for what it was there for in the first place, which is where a lot of experts think seem to think that it comes from um, dietary changes, you know, mm. where we um, where we used to eat, say, a lot more, like, um, plants. We used to eat a lot more sort of foliage as well, you know, so our body doesn't, do you know what I mean? Like grass, we don't, we don't eat really grass anymore. I don't know anybody who eats grass, you know. Um so it's not really it's not really it's not exactly a staple of our diet, is it? You know, so, so interesting. Our, our body doesn't need to break it down, you know, like it does in a in a cow or a sheep or, mm-hmm. or a grazing animal or something like that. So so really, you know, um more often than not, if you're getting any signs of issues and any any sort of problems with your appendix, um especially when it's getting on to being serious, they're they're quite quick to just sort of take it out. Um because like you say it's not really um, overly crucial, and at the same time, if it bursts, it can cause more problems than it's worth. Uh, than it's worth, you know. Um, so, so yeah, the appendix arguments. Um, either way, whether we're going to evolve to the point where we don't have one anymore. Um, but apparently, um, again, just a little bit of a segue. Apparently, the little toe is going the same way as well. Apparently, that's getting more and more redundant. Yeah, and I don't know if it's to do with footwear or just that we're more sedentary. But yeah, apparently, um, sooner or later, we might not have a little toe as well. So we're, we're not done evolving, guys. We're not done. We're not the finished product yet. Um, right, guys. So that was pancreas. Uh, we've done small and large intestines. We've done appendix. Um, of course, we'll do bladder as well while we're on. I'm sure we're all familiar with the bladder or a lot more than we are with the spleen and the pancreas. But of course, um, the bladder is is sort of the... Um, it's going to be where the urine is sort of stored until the point where you're going to um, go and excrete it pretty much, you know. So it's sort of, it's, it's a hollow organ um, located in the lower abdomen, um, which is why, you know, if you're bursting for the toilet and someone stands on your stomach or something, like the dog does it to me all the time now, he's, he's, he's like, he's just always wanting to be climbing on us. And it's like, <laughs> when, you need, when you need the toilet, like any pressure on your stomach, it's like, oh, I need to go, I need to go. Oh, um, be Sam, dude. So, 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 yeah, the uh, the bladder's walls actually relax and expand uh, to store urine as sort of necessary. And um, like I say, they contract and flatten, uh, totally flatten the empty urine through the through the urethra, you know. So, um, yeah, it's all to do with sort of processing water in the back end of the water process that the body sort of goes through. Um, and then I guess that the the the, the last one um, on there is the, is the rectum, which is the... Uh, you know, it's 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 the last stop off for number twos before uh, before it's um, dropped off at the toilet. You know, um, I'm sure there's probably a little bit of a more scientific uh, description. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, it's a straight eight inch chamber that connects the colon to the bum, pretty much, or the anus. Um, the rec- it, it, it's its job pretty much is to store it and then to let you know that you need the toilet. Like it's it's not the most um, glamorous thing to talk about, but at the end of the day, we all we all, we, we all do it. You know, it's yeah, that, exactly, that, that, that old famous book. Everybody poops. Every, yeah, yeah, human nature, mate, and um, it's, that's it in it. Like, dude, it's uh, yeah. kind of shy away from talking about it. Bodily functions, man. Everyone's got them, so it's nothing to be exactly. ashamed of. You know, it's it's normal. Everyone needs exactly. a poo. Everyone needs a wee. So just far too much taboo around it. Like, yeah, definitely. It's stupid. It's tough, man. It's like, tough, uh, isn't it? it really, really is. Yeah, yeah like. Um, really, really that's the thing like i got like friends who who like won't 
poo around the girlfriend and stuff and just be like, mate, like you're gonna have yeah, to do it yeah, at some yeah, point, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like it, come on, buddy, yeah. it's like it's it's a normal thing, you know. It's I yeah. mean, everybody does it. So it's That's like it. longer you leave it, the worse it's gonna be. Exactly. Definitely, definitely, buddy. Um, right, guys, I think that's all of them on there then. Of course, we, we had a good look at the heart last week, so we probably don't need to go into that too much. Um, so, so yeah, that'll about wrap us up for today then. Um, if we can just go to the last slide then, buddy, yeah, the yeah. important info slide, just so the guys can get a look. Um, again, my email is in the um, description for the video. Um, but again, if you need it in there, it's a little bit easier to find it. Just coming back to this slide, then it's on there as well. As always, if you've got any questions or anything like that, please do just let us know, um, and and I'll I'll do my best to sort of help. I'll point you in the right direction, or point you in the direction of some other resources or, or some information that might help you find out whatever it is that you that you're trying to find out. You know, but yeah, definitely don't don't uh, hesitate to get in touch if you need to. Um, as always, guys, please don't forget to fill in the little survey that's in the description as well. It doesn't even take thirty seconds, and it helps us out massively. You know, and of course, we 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 want to know what you guys think, what we're doing well, and um, where can we improve. And, and, and meet and sort of suit you guys even better, you know, especially as coming out of lockdown, there's going to be time to reflect on the, the, the opportunity to potentially get back in the classroom and bring some new sort of stuff in. We want to know your guys' thoughts, see where you are out with stuff. And like I say, just feel, uh, figure, get a feel for what's going to um, help you guys get the most out of the training and, and, and the sessions, I guess, really. Um, so, yeah, if you don't mind just um, following that link, like I say, not even 30 seconds. Um, do you have anything to add this morning, buddy, before we shoot off? No, mate, yeah, yeah. We've just got the fitness video in the description, obviously, which you guys can do. Of course, and, yeah. Uh, I've, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've actually hooked up. Um, it's a full body workout this morning because I want you to be thinking about the muscles that we've talked about this morning while you're doing it. So thinking about, okay, um, it's full body. What muscles might I be working here? You know, is it shoulders? Is it triceps? Is it quads? Just have a little bit of a thing and be engaged with those muscles while you're working them, you know, rather than sort of, it's easy to like sort of just be head down, focus on your breathing and like just, just pray for pray to God for the set to be over, you know, try and slow it down a little bit. Maybe don't push yourself quite as hard. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but try not to push yourself quite as hard, but really think about the muscles that you're working and the movements and doing them right. You know, yeah. so, so yeah, definitely check out that fitness video. Um, of course, that link will take you straight to the playlist as well, where we've got different options on there as well. If you fancy a stretch off, you know, there's a video on there. If you fancy doing an abs workout, there's one on there as well. So by all means, go, go and check it out. Uh, and again, let us know how you get on with that as well. Um, cause you know what? I'm always looking to make things a little bit harder when you get to the point where, uh, you're managing, you're managing a little bit easier. I'll throw you something else to do. Don't worry about that guys. So yeah, let me know how you're getting on with those as well, but definitely check out that video. And like I say, there's something there for everybody. If you are just looking for a little stretch or just something to get you moving and easing back into sort of exercise and fitness as we, as we're looking to, um, see what we're going to look post post lockdown, you know, and, 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 and see what your daily, see what your routine and your lifestyle is going to look like post post lockdown as well. You know, um, I'm not going to go as far as to say post COVID yet, but uh, certainly post lockdown, that's for sure. Um, but as always guys, if you, if I don't hear from you beforehand, stay safe, look after yourself, look after the people around you, have a good week and we'll be back at the same time next week to do it all again. Yeah. yeah cool. Exactly. Right, guys. Wrong, mate. Yeah. Not wrong. Yeah. Spot on, guys. Right. Look after yourselves. Have a good week. And I will see you back here next Wednesday then, guys. Take care. Okay, you know where he's guys. See you in a bit.